What's up everyone? Good morning. Dar Sizzle and Puddin coming at you. We are a fishing couple down here in South Florida and today we are located here in Stewart, Florida. We're actually at Stewart Beach, the main public beach here. Beautiful morning and today we are doing a little bit of beach fishing, doing something different. We got our beach cart right behind us and hopefully today the target is going to be some delicious whiting, croaker, and maybe some bycatch like snook, jack craval, and all kinds of good stuff. Yeah, it's super nice out. It's about, I don't know, it's going to be about 95 degrees today. We're not going to heat wave in the middle of summer. Uh, the water's supposed to be beautiful. we got a light southwest wind. And uh, we're going to get the rest of our stuff uh, on the cart. And uh, we're going to meet you on the beach. Yeah, let's do it. All right guys, we've made it to the beach and we're in a very secluded area of the beach and it's a gorgeous morning. The sun is actually has risen, but you can't see the sun. It's blocked by the clouds, so we're really getting a nice break from the sun right now. Getting rigged up. Captain Paul just gave me the right pyramid seeker because I don't have them with me. You need a size two, today at least, depending on the conditions of where you are. And then we've got Captain Paul's Spurcos very special surf rig right here and i don't know if i mentioned that at the beginning of the video but we're fishing with captain paul he's right next to us uh, captain paul spurco he does charters out here as well so you'll see him in a little bit but this is the setup as you can see right here we've got two hooks on dropper loops made by captain paul like i said available at the snook nook and we've got teeny tiny little hooks that's a size six j hook we've got and we have a very light um, leader i believe that was what do you say 10 pound 14, I think. 14, sorry. 14 <laughs> uh, size, 14 pound fluorocarbon leader. And you can see it's about two foot long. And then we've got our, our swivel here connected to our main line. In my main line, I have 15 pound fluoro on there. We're gonna take little pieces of fish bites here. You can see the cut already pre-cut, very tiny. And we're gonna take that and put it right on the hook. Today's special flavor is bloodworm. So we're just gonna put that right on work it on to the hook this one is a little tough there we go and then i'm going to show you what i'm going to put on the second hook in just one second for the second hook on the surf rig i've got a tiny piece of shrimp i just put right onto the hook very simple and then we're going to top that off with a little tiny piece again of the fish the blood worms fish bites and to correct myself here, just want to mention that the surf rig, we got a heavy duty swivel and then connected to that, I have a top shot here of 15 pound fluorocarbon leader. And then we're using a very, very light setup. My top shot is connected to my braid main line, which I have on this particular reel. This is 30 pound braid, just a very simple inshore setup, seven foot rod, nothing too fancy. We're not casting really far out. You're going to see exactly where we're fishing because this is pretty wild. All right, here we go. Water is a little on the chilly side, but actually feels nice. So once again, this is just my standard inshore combo. Nothing too special. This is my go-to setup for inshore when I'm inshore fishing. We've got a Shimano Travala, Shimano reel right here. And we're just going to pitch this right out into the trough, very close. And we're going to let it sit there on the bottom with that little sinker we've got, two ounce pyramid sinker, and just wait for that bite and release fish in. But that's exactly where these fish sit very close to the shoreline. Nice job, Dr. Sizzle, on that tackle and gear. Guys, while she's trying to catch a fish, I want you to guys to know why, why are we out here? Why are we trying to catch whiting and croaker today, right? Uh, this video is brought to you by Fish Angler App, one of Darcy's great sponsors for a couple years now. And, you know, in addition to having all the fishing spots, and we'll put this spot on here, assuming we catch a fish, you know, they, they have all the weather in one place, okay? And you can just pick, you can look at their, uh, at the map, and pick any buoy you want and check the weather there. And so we looked over the last couple days and we have a real weed problem this year. So when there's an east wind, we check on the app and, and it's been pushing a lot of seaweed into shore, so it's been unfishable. Today and yesterday, we had a little bit of a west wind and then a south wind, a southwest wind actually. So that's gonna push this seaweed off, off the beach like this, okay? So that's what happened and there's no weed here today. And we also check the tides on there. It has all that information on one spot on the app. And so now you can see we're at the bottom. We're gonna have an incoming tide. 
And uh, that's why we're here today. We've got a lot of great information by Captain Paul, works at Bass Pro Shops, sponsored by Penn. And uh, so it really should work out. So I just want you guys to know that's how, uh, what we're doing and why we're here and why we're catching these fish. We're trying to. Oh, I got a fish. I got one. Drag them onto the beach. First fish for me. Nice. All right, guys, so I just caught the first target species of the day, and that is a whiting. Captain Paul considers this a medium size, and of course, he's going to eat great. And we're going to show you how to cook them and killing them and all that good stuff. But first fish in the cooler, we've, let me pop this hook out, ate the top hook, as you can see. And we have moved to a different location because we're trying to find where these fish are. And they seem a little bit skittish. So I saw a school cast it ahead of where they were swimming and sure enough hooked a beautiful whiting right there. So like we mentioned before, we're going to put this on the fish angler app so you guys can check it out and see how you can do this exactly just like we did. So you can come out here and catch your own dinner fish. Well, let's get them in the cooler and we got to load up. We got to get a lot more. <laughs> we need a big fish fry. Pile of them. I just caught a little croaker, the first croaker. Yeah? Yeah, yeah move, move right down. Okay. All right, guys, we're still out here fishing after I caught all those baby fish. And then we just had one of Paul, Paul Sperko's friends, Jimbo, show up. And he has been fishing these waters and these, these beaches for over 40 years. He's the grandfather of Captain Pompano around here. And he just gifted us with the beautiful dragon fruit that he grew himself. And then you kind of crack it open like so. Brian already ate this half. And here's the other half. Brian says it's delicious. Taste it. So now I'm going to taste it, and then maybe I'm going to have to grow my own. <laughs> <laughs> delicious. Yeah, it's good, right? I eat the other half. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. Mm -hmm. Really good. There you go. Sizzle, tell us, tell us a little bit about how you're catching a fish. Like, where are you casting, and what's the bite like? Uh, yeah, since I can't seem to catch any live on camera with you guys, we have some <laughs> kind of uh, interesting weed moving in right now, so I'm trying to get as much fishing as possible because we're about to lose the opportunity to catch them. But anyhow, you can see we've got the two pieces here, and what we're doing is right here along the edge, there's a trough, you know, obviously, like at every beach, and there's kind of three humps that you can see in the water here uh, with your polarized glasses. I'm using Revo's, uh, but anyways, you cast them out, and what we're doing is we're waiting for the schools to come by and they're swimming across back and forth here. And when you see a school approaching, you wanna cast your bait about 10, 15 yards up ahead from where they're swimming because the bigger ones seem to be a little bit more uh, timid and a little bit uh, shy biting today. So that's what we're doing. That's how Captain Paul has caught a bunch of dust Jimbo behind me. And we're basically just kind of sight fishing to them at this point. But we have seen a bunch of schools just moving back and forth right here, right here along the trough, right here in the sand. That's where all the croakers and whitings are going to be sitting. And that's how we're loading up on our dinner right now. And, and tell me about the bite. Like, I know you're using, using uh, J-hooks, but you got to set the hook or they just go, get on the hook? Like, what happens? Yeah, so I'll post like an actual detailed thing on Fish Angler as well. So you guys can refer to this post and check it out. Follow me there for free. Download the app for free. Uh, but yeah, it's very, very simple. We're using, you know, number six J hooks here, so they got small mouths. But what you're doing is so, as soon as you let this sit on the bottom, cast it out, let it sit on the bottom and you get the bite. All you do is pretty much just steady reel and keep your rod tip down. And then you kind of want to just drag them slowly onto the beach. And obviously, since we're not casting so far, all you really need to do is just drag it straight onto the beach and keep that line tight, of course. I have lost a few. But that's, you know, also fishing, but you're not really setting the hook whatsoever. You're not doing that. All right, let's cast it back out. I see some right there. Let's see if we get a bite. What do we got? What do we got? Oh, we got a double header of baby pompano. Check that out. <laughs> First double header of the day, and I'm catching little baby pompano. That's Florida pompano that we catch in the wintertime around here. Whoop, there goes one. He's going to swim right away. Bye. And then, uh, Captain Paul thinks that these guys probably hatched about two weeks ago because they're just little baby, baby pompano, really cute. Smallest ones I've ever did see or caught. But we're gonna let these guys go, send this right back out. We got a little bit of a cloud right now, but like I said, we're sight casting. So I'm gonna throw some shrimp on there and see that that makes a difference. I've been fishing with shrimp and without shrimp. And of course, always having the fish bites on there. 
blood worm color. Let me go get some shrimp, cast it back out. These, got, these boys are out fishing me right now. Hooked up! Stay on the hook! Stay on the hook, buddy! All right, not bad. Not as big as the ones Captain Paul just caught, but we're getting there. They all look the same and eat the same on a fork. That's the old saying that goes. So we'll just pop this guy off and keep fishing here. But I think we got quite a few in there already. So we're just gonna keep loading up the cooler, getting as much as possible. You're allowed as many as you want. <laughs> That was funny. I, I don't think it's as many as you want. I think it's like a hundred, it's unregulated. It's like a hundred pounds or something. I was going to say that next thing. Which you. would be like a hundred. <laughs> It'll be like 200 of these. Yes. All right, I got them. You can put the bait on, I'll take the fish. Thanks. <laughs> that's a bee, 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 that's a bee. Yay! <laughs> he was trying to land on me. I think he thought this was flowers. That was crazy and I swatted him and hit him and then he flew away. I hate bugs. Is he on there? Not very big. Oh, it's a little permit. Oh, so cool. Look at that little permit. Was that a pomfretta or whatever? No, it's a permit. Yes. Pomfretta? What the heck is that? Some sort of thing. Look at that permit. It might be one of those pomfretta things. You think? I'm not sure. I don't know the difference, especially when they're that small. Tiny. I have to go ask Paul. Yeah. I'm curious. He actually does look like a pompano. Yeah, it's they all pompano. look very, very similar. Do they get as big as the regular Florida pompano? No. Yeah, it's a permit. That's a permit, right? Yes. There's no such thing as a pompretta or no, something? No. Pom palometta. Palometta. Have black stripes this way. Oh. The permit have the... The two wide. They wide. both have the, the two fins. But yeah. With, but without that black... That's a permit. That's a permit. Oh, cool. All right, let's let him go. Nice release. Bye, buddy. Ooh, Ooh fast. He just took off. <laughs> that was really cool. I just saw those black, you know, fins there. He said he pulled pretty good. He did. He did. Yeah, he pulled pretty good for his size. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Another species for me. Never caught a permit ever doing this on the beach. So that was pretty cool. My first permit ever. I don't care about the size. All right, let's get some more fish guys. Thank God. <laughs> all right guys we are back at the house got a few croakers laid out in front of me just went ahead and cleaned off you know all the sand and stuff from the beach um usually something i never have to worry about so it was interesting having to spray them off but we got maybe close to 20 in the cooler so not bad but you can see how the size of these whiting i think captain paul spurko called them like hot dog sized ones because they fit perfectly in a hot dog in a hot dog bun all right, so let's go ahead and fillet these guys. Gonna use my seven inch go-to. I'm gonna show you two different methods of filleting these smaller fish. Because again, I'm really not used to filleting fish this small. But again, they're gonna eat just as great as any other fish out there. They're really, really tasty. So let's dive right into this. There's two different ways. I'm gonna show you the traditional method I would use, which is just cut into the head, and run that right down the backbone. Just like any other fish, just on a much smaller scale. Slab it off, and you'll see how white this meat is. Not bad looking at all. All right, and that's pretty much it. Just like any other fish. There's one side, flip it over, do the same exact thing. Cut into the head, angle up, and it just takes practice just like anything else. You can see I'm like really pressing down on this fish because he's just so small. So just taking my time. And I'm going over the rib cage here, trying to leave as much um, bones on the carcass as possible. All right, so there we go. And that's one way you do it. All right, so there's our beautiful little croaker fillets. One is done. And then the other method to do this is super simple as well. And actually, I would recommend doing it on smaller fish, especially when you got a lot of them. Mosquitoes are getting me. But what you're gonna do is just cut right into the head, just like before. Turn that knife right around, which is, this is the Paul Spurko way. Thanks, Paul. And then just go all the way down, feeling as you go. And then you go, you gotta put fillet, flip it over, 
do the same exact thing. And I think you get about the same amount of meat, but I'm gonna show you, you have a little more work to do now when you skin it, like when you just cut it off all in one piece like this, and I'll show you what I mean in just a second. All right, there's the other piece over to the side. But now you can see that this one doesn't have the rib cage on it and this one does have the rib cage. So for this, you're just gonna have to do a little bit extra work. I'd like to do it while the skin is still on and just cut that out. Pin bones right in here like any other fish. Just go around that and then you skin it. And you can leave the skin on, of course, if you wanna cook it that way, but we're not. We're gonna take the skin right off. And then that piece that you just cut out comes right out. And so that is ready to go. There's your croaker filet. And then on the ones that I did normal, same exact thing, except I don't have rib cages to cut out. I just cut around the pin bones and then skin it off. And there we go. There's the piece. So there you see, using both those methods, we get about the same amount of meat on both fillets. So no complaints, whatever works for you. Just wanted to show you those two different methods. Pretty simple, but when you got a lot of them to do, you know, it adds up quickly. So you'll be here for a little bit if you got a lot of fish. But I got a, I have a few right here I've already done. Not bad at all, it's gonna be a tasty little meal. I'm gonna finish up the rest and then I'll meet you guys in the house for the cook and we'll put in portion of this video. Oh, my skiers, skiers. It's getting me so bad. Oh, look at the sky. They got me all in the worst spots. Thanks so much, Tarsillo, for cleaning up those whiting. Uh, I know they're not huge, guys, but it's, it's like crappy fishing or shell crackers or bluegills. They're really delicious and a lot of fun for the whole family. But welcome, guys, to another edition of Cooking with pudding. Do I got it on right? I do. This is the fried fish whiting slider edition. Pretty excited. These are gonna be delicious. Um, so let me tell you what I did. So I just, you can see all my stuff I got spread out here. Basically doing a slider, uh, fried fish, less than tomato, and some nice sauce. Okay, so I just coated the fish with the Zatarians, whatever you pronounce that, fish fry coating. Uh, and some egg wash, threw it in the pan. I got the bread uh, toasting in the oven, right? And I got some lesson tomato here. And I think we're about ready to get this going, Sizzle. Now, of course, once you fry this stuff, it's the standard process, you know, you egg it and you, and, and, you, and you put the spread on it or the coating and then you fry it up. And then, of course, we like to put it on this rack and that makes it dry a little bit easier and keeps it nice and uh, crispy. And of course, all these things that we use, you can find on the Amazon store. Link is in the description below. This rack, the beautiful pan you guys bought me, all that kind of stuff, all right? Let's get the bread out. I didn't put it on broil because I didn't want Darcy to yell at me. So it's been in there baking. But here we're gonna go. Sizzle, come on over here. We're just gonna get some fish. These are potato rolls. You can use Hawaiian rolls, really anything you want. You can just load these up as much as you like. I got a nice tomato here on my Margaritaville thingamajiggy. This is salad from Costco. I didn't go out and buy a whole other piece of lettuce. And then you could use almost any sauce. I'm gonna use this Ramelade sauce, which uh, Captain Paul Spurko loves and also George Poveromo supposedly likes. But you can use tartar sauce, ketchup, honey, whatever you wanna do. Just gonna slap that on. Oh, look, look, look how good it looks. This is a nice early dinner for Darcy and I. All right, look at that. I'm gonna make another one or two. Bring it up, Darcy, Sizzle, to my handsome face. Uh, I'm going to make another one or two, and then we'll bring it to the table to see how Darcy likes it. We'll see you in a minute. All right, Darcy, what do you think? Good. Uh, it's getting like a piece of fuzz out. Fuzz? That's my hair. There's like fuzz on my... Oh, food. I'm spilling. There's more fuzz. What the heck? Oh, well. Diving in. Oh, I'm almost done with my beer already. <laughs> you got to stop shaking up the beers before you hand them to me. I know it's delicious because I already had three sandwiches in between walking from the kitchen to here. How do you like it? Amazing. It is good. Yeah. He usually doesn't like condiments on his food, so it was interesting to see him put that sauce on. But yeah, he literally inhaled that this little sandwich in three bites. Mm -hmm. And he just made another one, and now he's doing the same exact thing. But yeah, amazing fish. Really can't complain. Can't wait to go out there and do it again. 
Last time we did this, they were much bigger croakers. So yes. it's just interesting to see, you know, what's biting and what's not. But we didn't get any, sorry, bigger whitings, I said. I said croakers. Yeah. I'm getting all confused here. Then other days, the croakers bite. So it's interesting. But they're all delicious fish on the beach. Easy. All your family can do it. Once again, we're going to post all that information on the Fish Angler app. Thank you so much to Fish Angler app for sponsoring this video. Yes. Of course. And then I just want to show you this little uh, homemade bouquet here. My flower, my rose plants are going insane outside. They're and just beautiful. Pretty, they're just like all kinds of flowers are growing right now. But I also gave them a bunch of fertilizer last month. And then look, they're all blooming like crazy. Isn't it so pretty? It is. Fine. She has a green thumb. I do. <laughs> yes. Good for you. One of these days we'll show you the miracle fruit we keep talking about. I had one last night, it was delicious. Yes. Miracle berry. Right? Berry, yes. All right. Anyhow, <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching this episode. We hope you enjoyed and stay tuned because we've got a lot more content headed your way. Until our next adventure, follow your dream and, and keep, keep on, on catching. catching. Cheers.